Hi, it's Beamer Zen, and in this video I'm going to show you how to remove the intake manifold on the BMW N43 engine. This is the N43 B20 version with 122 HP and it is inside this BMW 1 series, the E81 chassis. But the procedure should be the same for all BMWs with this kind of engine. There are also some minor differences on how to remove the strut braces and the cabin filter housing. But in this video you should get the basic idea on how to do it on your car. So first we have to remove the micro filter housing here and it is attached with 8 mm screws and you remove them and pull off the cover and reveal the debris underneath. Next we need to remove the two covers on the left and on the right side of the car and you have to undo these clips here using a flat screwdriver and just unhook it. There's another one on this side. And it should just pop off. Then we have to disconnect this uh, hood sensor and remove the wire that goes to the switch. Then we have to remove two 8 mm screws on this side and also on that side. Next we have to remove this front cable here. So there are pins here that you have to press in and it should release. And then you can pull it out. Be careful you don't break these pieces here like I just did. So yeah, take a note of that. And now we can take out the rest of the harness. And now we can finally take out the whole tray. I'm gonna give this bit a little bit of a clean just uh, to prevent any debris from falling inside of the engine later. Now let's remove the acoustic cover and we have to use Torx. There's another Torx screw here at the back. And it's gone. Remove the oil cap. Now we should be able to remove the cover. I'm gonna put the oil cap back on so I avoid accidentally dropping anything inside the engine at this point. I've used the zip tie and tie off the wire harness so it's out of the way. Now I have to remove the strut on this side. So I have to remove this nut. So I'm gonna use a huge screwdriver and rotate it 45 degrees. And now I should be able to pry it out. And by the way, there's a seal here. And if it's damaged, you have to replace this cover. Otherwise, water is gonna get in and you'll have a rusty car. And this center bolt is E18. And now I should be able to just pull it out. And I'm also going to remove this wire that goes to the starter motor. This is the plus. So I just need to remove this piece of plastic here. And that exposes the nut so we can remove it. And uh, I will have to remove this 
pressure connector here. There's a tab underneath. I'm going to use a flat screwdriver and pull it out. I'm also going to disconnect the low pressure fuel line and I'm also going to remove this uh, pressure sensor. So this sensor is actually the high pressure sensor and this one is the low pressure sensor here. To get to this connector at the back, I will have to disconnect this PCV hose. This is the breather hose that attaches the valve cover to the CCV. And you have to squeeze two tabs and then you should be able to slightly wiggle it and eventually pull it out. I'm going to use a little bit of WD-40 here. Now we disconnect the sensor. There's a tab at the back and you have to squeeze it and pull out the connector and it should release. So here's the tab. Next we have to disconnect the low pressure fuel line and you first have to remove this safety ring. You just pry it off. And then I'm going to use a rag to make sure that all of the excess gas is soaked into the rag. And I'm also going to be careful. There could be some pressure here and the fuel could just, uh, you know, spray around. So be careful. To release this, you have to push the hose in. And then you should be able to push this part in and it should release. I also use some masking tape and block off the intake side of the fuel rail. Now I have to remove the air box. Two 10 mm bolts on the side. Now disconnect the throttle body connector. There is a small pin on the front of the connector. You have to lift it up and then you can push the connector away and it should release. Next, disconnect the mass airflow sensor that is inside of the box. First, lift up this gasket and here you will see the connector. To remove the connector, you just have to squeeze the two pins on the side and uh, it will release. Next, undo the clamp on the throttle housing. Now gently pull off the rubber boot. Make sure you don't scratch the surface on the throttle housing. And now take off the air box. And it's out. Next, remove the rubber holder for the plus cable that goes to the alternator. And just uh, put it to one side. Disconnect the purge line that goes to the purge solenoid. You just have to squeeze the tabs and slowly wiggle it out. And remove the connector. Disconnect the pressure sensor. You have to press down on this tab and it will unhook. Disconnect the cables on this plastic holder. You have to lift up on one side and it should disconnect simultaneously. There's another connector here that you have to unclip. Now unclip this purge line. Remove the harness from the holders. You just have to slip it out. You can use a small screwdriver to help it release. There are two more at the back. Also disconnect the little clip that holds the wiring harness here on the side for the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor. 
Before we remove the bolts on the intake port side, make sure that this area is nice and clean and free of any debris or dirt. You can vacuum it out and make sure that nothing falls inside of the intake ports. These are 11 mm bolts. Remove the bolts, make sure you don't drop them inside of the engine bay. Next there are two 13 mm bolts at the bottom of the intake manifold on this side. So here is the first bolt, it's pretty easy to reach with some extensions. And then there's another one right here. It's a bit harder to reach but it can be done with universal joint and some extensions from this side. Be careful not to drop the bolt inside of the engine bay. You can use magnetic gripper to get to the bolt. This is how I got to the second bolt. So I have a long extension and then I have universal joint and a shorter extension and a socket. And uh, I was just able to release it. And again, I'm going to remove it with the help of the magnetic gripper. Now we just have to remove the two torque bolts on the EGR valve that is mounted to the side of the engine. There are uh, T30 torques. Again, make sure that you don't drop the bolts inside of the engine bay. Remove this holder here, 11 millimeter bolt. This way we gain some more space to remove the intake manifold. Not sure why, but there's another zip tie holding this uh, wiring harness here. So I'll have to cut it and replace it when reinstalling the intake. Or apparently you can just pull it out and you don't have to cut it. And now I can gently pry out the intake. I have to somehow wiggle it out of this spot here. I'm going to rotate the whole manifold like this a little bit so that I avoid hitting the alternator here at the bottom. And now I'm going to try and guide out the hose for the EGR system because it gets stuck into this uh, wiring harness holder here. Okay, we're getting there. There's another attachment point for the fuel line and unfortunately it broke just when I was about to remove it. There is another connector here at the back that we have to remove and uh, this is a heater plug for this return hose for the CCV system and to remove this connector you have to lift up this little tab at the back and you have to be quite careful because uh, it can break easily and now we can finally remove the intake there are two rubber bushing at the bottom where the bolts are so there are two piece and the intake manifold gets sandwiched between so it's uh, nice and isolated from the engine and uh, when you are removing the manifold make sure that you don't lose them. Here I have both of the intakes. This is the intake from this engine that I just removed and this is the intake for the more powerful version of the B20 and the B16 and the difference is that this intake has variable intake headers which means that it adjusts the length of the intake so it can produce more power and this is controlled via this actuator so this basically just rotates and uh, there's a small lever in here and it uh, opens and closes the path for the intake air and uh, this is why you have a extra connector here for the stronger version of this engine so this is the connector that is right here 
on the less powerful version it is uh, blinded out but on the more powerful versions it is connected to the actuator and on the back there's also this uh, vacuum solenoid that is attached to a separate bracket and the less powerful version does not have this uh, solenoid or this bracket and the connector for this solenoid is uh, right here at the back so you have to remove it if you have the more powerful version of the B16 or the B20 engine. Now we have access to the starter motor and the starter solenoid right here and we also have access to all of the sensors that live underneath the intake manifold. We have the crankshaft position sensor right here underneath the starter. Here is the coolant temperature sensor and there's also oil pressure sensor here. Then there are two knock sensors. One is for cylinder one and two and the other one is for the cylinder three and four. And there is also the solenoid for oil pressure regulation. So if you look here you can see the solenoid and this solenoid controls the oil pressure that goes through the engine because these engines have electronically controlled oil pressure. And here we also have a pretty typical example of a leaking seal between the engine block and the oil filter housing. As you can see there is uh, some oil seeping through and pulling down beneath into this cavity right here. So this engine definitely needs this gasket replaced. I'm going to install the intake manifold in a separate video and I'm going to put the link down in the description or up in the card. You will find all of the details like torque values and connectors and hoses that you have to reattach there. So if you have the N43 engine, consider subscribing to my channel. I have plenty of videos on this engine, maybe you will find something useful. Consider liking, uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.